Welcome back to Rick's Corner. Listen, I got Tony Pearson back again. I'm really happy to have him. He comes to town once in a while and we want to sit and chat about bodybuilding, about his life and things that he had done in the past and in the present. And I know you guys really enjoy this, so he gave me the time to come over today. You live in Las Vegas, right? I do, yes. So now he's in sunny, sunny California. Sunny California, <laughs> never rains. Yeah, never, well, it's supposed to rain. <laughs> so we'll see if that happens. Actually, last week we had mudslides. I, I saw it on the news. The whole five was closed. They got inside the cars and the cars were jammed and oh people died God. and got suffocated. Oh. Wow, that's weird for California. Very strange. Anyway, Tony, so you're here and, and, and you have a long history in bodybuilding. A lot of people yes. know this. Uh, where did you originate all this? Uh, I was born in Memphis, um, 58 years old, and we moved to St. Louis. Uh, Mid, that's 1970. Yeah, I went to high school there. Yeah, and most bodybuilding transitioned from a different sport, you know, track and field, yeah, football. Sure. I came from wrestling. Okay, so I saw Muhammad Ali at high school talking talk to kids. I got motivated, so I couldn't box. Forget about that. So I went after the wrestling team and made a rest for three years. I was on the team, and then um, I injured my knee. Yeah, and the doctor said to me, "Well, go to the gym and rehab your knee yourself." So that's how I started with weight training. What did you do your knee? Um, ACL. It was everything that was just, it was destroyed. Knees are the first to go. First to go, especially on a wrestling mat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no question about it. Yeah, so he goes, so I, got, I went to the gym every day, trained at one lake, and then I started pumping my arms, chest a little bit, you know, you're a kid. And you got good results. And I got fast results. So um, my wrestling coach said, hey, want to go to a, to a gym? So in St. Louis, Missouri, I go to George Turner's gym. I don't know if you heard of George Turner. I know George Turner. He started training me from, from the first day. He, he was like, friends with Ken Waller. Yeah, 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 right. right. Yeah. You know, Kenny Waller trained in his gym, right. Samir Venu trained in his gym, right. uh, Dave Johns mm -hmm. trained in his gym. And then he saw me, uh, the first day, he comes over and says, I'm going to start training you. And man, the routine he put me on was insane. I was, what, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. I was squatting 400 pounds at a body weight of about uh, 160, if that. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. 10 sets of 10, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That was oh, George. that's how you did the body parts? That's, that was George's routine. No, it was his only body parts. He was training my legs and he was training my lats, only pull-ups. That's really? the only thing, two things I was allowed to do. But ten sets of ten. Ten sets of ten, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. I put on about a good 30 pounds within what eight about, months. What about uh, your chest, shoulders, and arms? When I got to California, that's what I was missing. I was missing chest and <coughs> triceps. I had good biceps genetically. You know, I got a very small bone structure, small joints. Mm -hmm. So, illusion-wise, I look bigger than I really am. Yeah. I don't weigh myself. I, I, I'm guessing now I'm about 195. Okay. There's no scale in my house. Um, when I went to America, it's probably about 185. Okay. People get the illusion that I'm so big. I'm, I'm a small guy, small frame, small body, but only when I flex, I look big. Mm -hmm. And that's the illusion of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to project something so when I pull, you're going to see something different. It's weird with weight because um, I don't go by the scale, but it is kind of a judge throughout the week to see if I'm holding water or not holding water. And I've asked three or four people in the gym, I said, what do you think I weigh? And I've had people guess me from 179 to 187. I said, you are so far off. I'm 223. <laughs> But uh, apparently, I don't look at the people. You know, right. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's deceiving because over the period of years of training, like you do and I do, you hold a certain amount of thickness in the core and the body, yes. and it's just there. Yes, and it weighs. And it, it weighs has weight to it. The quality, quality muscle. Exactly, quality muscle. So, so you think a lot of your body is genetics? <coughs> yes, I would, say, I would say half is genetics. I had uh, good structure. I always knew I had good structure. Yeah, but I didn't have a chest. And when Arnold taught me that workout that day on the beach, that's what he was training my chest and tricep because he realized I didn't have it. All right. But I had good quads. I mean, George Turner had me squatting 400 pounds. Of course. And I continued to do it. That's all I knew. So I was squat, 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 massive quads, wide back. Yeah. So that was the structure. Then I had to really start building my chest and my triceps. What did he give you to do for chest? Um, bench press, of course, uh, dumbbell flies, pullovers. But it didn't work for me. The bench didn't work. I was just going to say that. I, I was, Rob said, do uh, dips, do some uh, heavy dumbbell pressing. Mm -hmm and uh, dumbbell flies and do your pullovers. And those four exercises would develop my chest. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to the bench and then you, you could get results from it. Well, the bench is, a, is a basically a powerlifting move. I know right. mine too, is I was good in the bench, but it didn't develop my pecs no. until I switched to dumbbells. Exactly. You had a different form, you come down lower, you come together at the top. Right, uh, better it, contraction. Yeah, yeah. It's a better isolation. Yeah. You don't use your tries and shoulders. Right. So that's, that, that was the whole key. And dumbbell flies and dips really work. Oh, there's no question. Doing dips in reverse, reversing your body the opposite way. What do you mean? So instead of the typical dip, you turn the other way and lean forward, chest and legs going that way, keeping your legs in front of you. Oh, wow, I've never seen that. Really isolates that lower back. <clears throat> yeah. You can't use your body. No triceps, all chest. So you're leaning over, when you lock out, contract the top of the chest, and you don't raise up. 
So everything is isolation. Would you consider that be very similar to decline pressing? Yes, it's very similar, but the decline press, I did it once in my life, and I got off the bench never again, jammed both shoulders. Yeah. That's why I said, nope, never again. Yeah. It's like a front squat. Yeah. I did it one time. I went down, oh, came up, I put it back, I'm done. They're very hard to do. Very hard Take to do. Take a lot of balance. There's a lot of balance. Um, so your, your tries benefited from doing what? Um, dips off the bench. I remember in the early 80s, I was training with Robert Superman Blunt, and that was, he trained with Lee Haney after, after mm -hmm. me, too. Uh, we did a lot of dips, heavy dip plates in your lap off the bench. Oh, sure. Um, French press overhead, easy curl bar, right. dumbbell kickbacks, uh, rope overhead. You know how the old dumbbell with the downhill, like dumbbell this way? That works unless you have bad shoulders. Right. That's out of my routine. There's a lot of things out of my routine like, yes. <laughs> these days. Well, you there's get, things you can't do. You know, you, you can do the standing triceps with, uh, with a dumbbell or with the easy curl bar, for example. Right. I can't do it. My shoulders are too bad. They're frozen. So now yes. i got to find an alternate yes. that works equally as well. That's hard. you got to modify everything that you do. I can't deadlift anymore. I stopped doing dips. Rarely do I do pull-ups because it's jammed in my shoulders. Yeah. It's, it's just something wrong. But I know you improvise and you tweak it a little bit and still yeah. get the same results. What do you do for shoulders now? Uh, uh, shoulders, no more seated behind the neck pressing. Oh, no, no, forget no. that. No. Dangerous. I do a lot of standing dumbbell laterals. Turning it here, right. straight to the side. Are you light or heavy? Uh, moderate. How many reps? Standing uh, 10, 12. Okay. All, everything I do is like 8, 10, 12. It's, uh, before the show, may I jump up to 15 reps, but it's always 18, 12, and isolate in the muscle group. The mistake most people make in the gym these days, <coughs> I want to talk about this, is two things. They are, they're not connected to their muscles. Right. They just do the bicep curl to hope something happens. I know. When I curl the bar, I know what's happening. Yeah. Because there's an area of the bicep I'm focused on, and I keep my mind connected to that point. And that's on every muscle group that I do. Right. Bicep curl, the bicep's doing the work. Allow the bicep to pull the weight. Don't swing and don't twist and don't put all this body language, I, I call so it. so much of that in the gym. I don't understand it. And it is heavy, and they say, well, heavy means size. No, that's not necessarily. No. It's the isolation, what means size. And the second part of this is the resistance of that weight. So when the weight comes down, control the weight on the way down. Stop thinking about the positive. Stop thinking about the negative. Mm -hmm. You focus on the negative, deplete control. I call it my chi. So I find myself when I'm centered into that muscle, and that's all I'm totally connected mm -hmm. for 12 reps. Mm -hmm. So the first, the last rep is like the first one. It's slow, it's controlled, it's isolated. Right. And that's when you get fast results, very fast. Well, I have a question for you because a lot of the guys are doing light weights, high reps nowadays, Rich Piana, some of the guys. And I did it for like a month, you know, I mean, it, it, not heavy, but light. I mean, I was used to curl 65 pound dumbbells, and I'm doing 20s, and they feel heavy after a while because you're not used to the heavy ones, right? Right. All right, so I see some results, and then I don't see any results. I see like I'm getting smaller, I'm getting weaker. So last week I decided just to increase all my poundages, and I practically pretty much doubled it all. My body weight shot up and I got stronger and I, I filled out. Okay. The heavy weight for me, and I think for a lot of people, not that it's heavy heavy, but it's heavier than the real light stuff for the reps, I actually put more size on it. It's true. Yeah. It's not light for me, it's moderate to heavy. Moderate to heavy. Yes, but with the form, it makes it heavy. Yes. It's, if you isolate in good technique, it's gonna get heavy fast. Right. And you know, the, the, pump, the pump's gonna be super fast. But, the two, but if it's too light, it's almost too light. It's too light. Yeah. No, 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 it's never too light. I always make sure it's enough weight that I can handle, that I can still use the muscle and still control it. Mm -hmm. One, the, once I start dropping the weight out of control, I put the weight down. Yeah, well, a lot of people drop the weight. They it's just going down the same as going up. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, and you see a lot of people in the gym, they're going like really heavy and cheating those curls and throwing a lot of weight on there, and it's the shoulders doing all the work. Yeah, and, and back. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, squats the same thing. When I'm squatting, I focus on my upper quads, and I'm connected to the upper quads. If you gotta think about the weight that you're using, yeah. then you're training too heavy. Right. Your muscle, you should be mentally focused on your quads as you're squatting. Right. Keeping your legs flexed on the way down and on the way up. It's not dropping into the squat and bouncing back up. Right. It's control, you sit down into the squat, so your quads get all the work. It's the same thing with everything, uh, and I've said this before in my show, I see this guy in the gym, he's got a little handle for cables, he's doing curls, he's doing this. And he's looking all around, he's like, what? I, I want to say to him, what are you doing? Do you realize this is doing nothing for you? He's thinking about, you got to wash his car, you got to go shopping later. Yeah. Because he's not thinking about his body at all. No, no, no. So that's the idea. you got to really focus on the muscle group you're working. It takes a lot of concentration. A lot well, of those focus. are the people that you see uh, year after year in the gym that make no progress. Right, exactly. exactly. What about cardio? Cardio, I have, you know... I'm an ectomorph, is it ectomorph? Yeah. I have such a fast metabolism, and uh, since 2010 until now, I'll, I'll tell you my diet, no cardio. 
but I got in shape, real shape. I trained twice a day, six days a week, Yeah. and it's high protein and very, very low carbs, right. and almost zero fats. Okay. So I'm walking, what about, what almost, about, I'm almost walking dead. What about using fats for energy? It doesn't work for me. No? No, fat sticks. Mm -hmm. So it's the low carbs, high protein, and get rid of the fat. But it does work for some people. Some people it does work. Everybody's different. Yes. In the beginning, I had such a fast metabolism, diet was not on my plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like eating everything in sight. I mean, when I weigh 200 pounds, I'm excited. I'm huge. I've never been big. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be big. Mm -hmm. I want to be big enough to win the contest. Right. No, I get that. So it's nothing about size for me. Um, um, yeah. No, no. I was, I was thinking about the diet because back in the day when we were trained out the beach, you and I and all the guys, there was no cardio. No, there was no cardio. No. We didn't know what that meant. Right. But your workout was cardio. It's a cardio weight workout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's superset, tricets, you know, nonstop. It was so intense. Yeah. You drag out of the gym. Right. You pray that you make it out. Right. And you fall asleep at stoplights. <laughs> right. And then you come back to second workout and do the same thing the same day. Yeah, in the afternoon. People don't understand I've been doing this since 1974. And I got a few critics out there. I'm going, wait a minute. Since 74 to now, I should have some muscle left. Absolutely. I've been doing this my whole life. Well, that's the thing with a lot of you guys. Not a, lot, a lot of you guys are big fans of Tony and big fans of the show, and I really appreciate that we all do. You always get one or two haters, and we all know that. And you hit on every YouTube channel that you see, and they're always going to point fingers and make fun of somebody because they're so little insecure people that sit home, have nothing going for them except a keyboard, and they end up being failures in life, and that's my take on it. <laughs> so they want to point fingers at everybody else and put them down so it builds them up, but it doesn't. It makes them look like fools. And you people who enjoy the show, get down on them and put them down for us. You're our defense team, and we appreciate it. But Tony is your how old? 58. All right, how are you going to look at 58, you guys out there? You going to look like him? You know, there's a good chance that 90% of you won't, 95% of you won't. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time in the gym, it takes a lot of strict diet discipline to be like this. And don't say it's all about drugs because it's not. Drugs are a small part of what we do, right. but they are a part because at some point you were doing it. Yes, in, in the early on in my career, I was doing it, and uh, I was afraid of it though. This is my real feeling about this. Yeah. I was afraid to take a lot of this because I, I had no idea what it's going to do to my body. Right. And my career is going to end. Right. And then what? Yeah. So I took very small amount and I relied on my training. I always said to myself, I'm going to squat 400 pounds when I'm on and I'll squat 400 pounds when I'm not taking it. What did you take that was mild or moderate? What, what would you say? A little Primo, a little Becca, a little yeah. Anvar. But such a small amount. What I, what I took in one month, I, uh, I'm sure. It's like today the guys are doing daily. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Primo back then was actually really good. It was good stuff. I got some from Arnold and Franco and my yeah. weight shot up. In fact, I had a Volkswagen and I gained so much size I could hardly fit inside the car. Mm -hmm. And then I got nervous. I said, I don't want to be this big. This is ridiculous to right. be big. Right. And so uh, I, I stopped doing it and I went just down to something moderate again. I wasn't even doing that much with like a CC a week, I think. Okay. But it was new to me. Right. So when you do something new like that, your body it doesn't respond very quickly. Very quickly. Um, since 1990, I haven't touched anything, and there's no reason for it. You know, when I was with the WBF, mm -hmm. to make it very clear, mm -hmm. Vince was not messing around. When he said blood tests, he mean blood tests. Mm -hmm. They call you overnight. Mm -hmm. If you flunk the test, you lose your salary for the month. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose any money. I was always in shape. It was one of my best shapes, 1990, 1992, Long Beach. Best shape, no drugs. I know how to train. Yeah. I know my body. I know what I need to do to win. I'm competing against myself. Right. It's not the other guys. I'm always trying to outdo myself. And why am I doing it today? <clears throat> For myself. There's yeah. no competitions. There's no prize money. I'm doing it because I'm challenging myself. And there's nothing to prove other to yourself. You can beat your own records. Right. And that's all I'm trying to do. Right. Why would I juice up, take all this stuff? What is the purpose? Yeah. They said I've lost a kidney. I'm sorry, I still have my kidneys. Yeah, I know you do. And I lost my hair, so maybe they're somewhere together. Go we'll find them. Well, we talked about that. I found out at 28 I had one kidney. I was born with one kidney. I didn't know that. I, my blood pressure was high. I was wrestling. They put me in for a renal surgery. Do you know I only had one kidney? I said, how would I know? I, I don't look at myself. I can't tell. But I've never had a problem with it. Okay. Ever, 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 no matter what I've taken. My hair was choice. I chose to shave my head. I chose to shave my head. It was just one of those things that, that uh, in acting, I was my hair was getting thin, and I thought I'm not getting the roles I want. I said, I want to change my look, so I shaved my head, and I ended up getting more roles. Right. So it worked, and then all of a sudden, now today, a lot of guys are shaving their head. Yes, it's trendy. It's yeah. trendy, yeah, and it's easy. It's a lot easier. And you always look your best in yes. the morning. <laughs> yes. So how's your training now different from what you did years ago? Uh, like I said, I've taken a lot of things out. Uh, the deadlifts are out, and it's more, it's volume, high volume, yeah. sets and reps. Um, not a lot of supersetting, kind of straight set. Yeah. But I still train twice a day. I got in shape, 18 years semi-shape, and then I got in shape in 2010. 
and for the last five years I've been in really top form on stage shape. Mm-hmm. But it's back, it's back to my diet. So it's chicken breasts, ground turkey, egg whites with a couple yolks, um, asparagus, broccoli, yeah. two apples a day, one grapefruit, um, very little brown rice. That's my carbs. Yeah. I don't have oatmeal. I don't drink coffee. I don't have any protein shakes. There's no blender in my house. I just eat my food six times a day. Well, apples are a little bit of carbs. A little bit of carbs. Simple. But it's simple carbs. Yeah. And it's, it's very, very you got to have some. And when you train twice a day, you got to have some. Yeah. I'm like walking dead. My clients say, you're going to die today? I wish I could. <laughs> It'd be easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's how I feel. Right. But this has been going on since 2010. So it's been twice a day training. So it's, it, it's, it's... Do you have a, like back in those days we had cheat days, like a Sunday. Do you have a cheat day? I have my cheat meal once in a while. You know, I'll cheat here and there. If I got something coming up, nothing. I will, yeah. will not. But if I have a little time in between, yes. Cheat meal. Isn't it funny though, as you get older, and when you're younger, like that, you want your cheat meal. You look forward to eating. I know Waller was like crazy about it. Yeah. And uh, a lot of guys, they go nuts. I did too on Sundays. I'd be like a house of pies and cheesecakes and spaghetti and meatballs and you name it. Now it's like, eh, I don't really want anything. Right, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, I don't crave like, it anymore. I'll share some ice cream with my girlfriend, a couple of bites. Right. And, yeah. Um, the pizza's not one piece, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, if that's it. No. You just lose your taste for all that stuff because you know you feel good when you eat right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, when I was on stage, I weighed about 205 max, I think. You know, mm-hmm. and like I said, I'm never a big guy. Yeah. Only when I flex, the illusion comes. Oh, no, no, no. no. This is small waist, big shoulders, big arms. <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks good. Well, right. I just went to Sharky's for lunch. And I had to eat something, so I had steak mm-hmm. and uh, grilled vegetables and a little bit of yams. Okay. So this is how I eat, and I look around me at the people eating in the world today, and I'm not getting old and senile or grouchy, you guys, but it's disgusting when you see what people eat, and they're next to you, and they're young, and they're fat. They're so fat, they've got five rolls of fat on their bellies and their backs and their legs, and especially a lot of the women. I think, you're young guys and young girls. What's going to happen 10 years from now? Right. Why are you eating like that? All this food has got to yes. go somewhere. Yes. And uh, I don't understand how they even get in the mirror or how they shower or what they think when they look at themselves. It's, it's really bad. It's, you know, it's normal. When I was in school and on the basketball court and hanging around, everybody was in shape. Yeah. Because you're outside all day, you're doing activity all day. Yeah. Like football, basketball, running track, you know, you're always doing something. Now right. it's like a computer. Yeah. And they're lazy, lazy. Well, so uh, uh, if you go active. to the gyms today, if you go around town, a lot of the guys in their 20s, pretty good shape True. compared to what it was years ago. They're in pretty good shape. They're doing all types of different workouts and CrossFit and all that True. and hiking and all that. I'm really happy to see that. And the women too, in good shape. A lot of yeah. them. Like the majority of them. Uh, when you reach 40, 50, and 60, a lot of the guys fall out of shape and I have a lot of them contact me. What do I do now at my age? I want to get back in shape and I'm really over the hill and they think at 50 they're over the hill. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Wait till they get to be my age. And it's like, it's not too late. You can catch it and fix it. Right. You can. You can. But it's a little discipline though. It takes a lot of discipline. And it's down to diet. They go, how do you get a six pack? I said, diet. Yeah. I get this all the time. How do you get your abs like that? Oh my God. Diet. Well, okay, I was on that point. Working abs will keep them hard. It will not reduce them. It would not reduce them or sharpen them. Nope. <laughs> or thicken them. Uh, well, it will thicken them. Yeah, but. It, it'll make them thick where they stick out. So Mine get stick big. out yeah. on the other way out. So it's it's basically, there's no way to spot reduce your stomach. It's yep. all diet. It's all diet. You want abs, you can do 100 reps of crunches or whatever, you know, just to keep right. them in tone. Right. But the rest comes from diet. And and by going to the gym and working them every day is not going to make them your waist small. It's no. going to make your waist bigger. Bigger, right. Exactly. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. They do the twist, which are for the sides, and, the, and the, they're doing these side oh, bends. Working that oblique muscle. Working the oblique muscle, and it gets thicker and thicker. And you say, my God, I better start working them harder because I'm getting thicker, thinking that it's going to reduce them, but actually it's making them bigger and you're defeating yourself. They grow. They grow. Three things I don't train is my oblique muscles, my forearms, and my traps. Yeah. Why? Because when you deadlift and you do your barbell rows and your mm-hmm. T-ball rows correctly, you're working your traps. Oh, yeah. If you grab the bar, you're working your forearms. Yes, you are. Just from holding on. And your bleeds, if you develop your bleed muscle, you've lost your symmetry. You've lost it. You'll be blocky. You're blocky. Um, the funny thing is, is that you work your arms indirectly every time you work your back and your chest. Exactly. And your shoulders. Exactly. It should be enough to get the forearms right. engaging. Now, when you do this and you're working your, your, those three body parts and not your arms, when you hit your arms separately, do you have to do as many sets or less sets because you've already pre-worked them somewhat directly? I do less sets. I have, for biceps, I do maybe 12 sets. Okay. How many times a week? Quality sets. Twice a week. Okay. Every muscle group must be trained twice a week. Right. Uh, the first time, I would say maximum. Second time, 80%. Okay. More reps. 
Okay. But if you want growth, it has to be it has to be trained twice. Okay. Training it once a week is just maintaining. Yeah. So if you if you want if you train through a contest, it must be twice a week. If you cycle it though, I mean I do twice a week as well, but if you cycle it, I'm taking more days off now just to get rest in between, it ends up spilling over to the next week. So True. Your, your, your seven day cycle becomes a nine day cycle. That's okay. It just keeps overlapping. Yeah, they overlap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it keeps yeah. overlapping. So right. it, it still ends up being like twice a week or right. twice in a cycle. Where it, where it falls. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, right. It, exactly. It's the same principle. Right. Because years ago, before you and I, a lot of the guys like Steve Reeves trained three times a week. I know. Yes. And it kind of in the direction of overtraining. But they had good bodies. Oh, fantastic bodies. They didn't have the drugs we had. No. No. <laughs> and they no. ate. They ate decent. Yeah. Uh, I remember going down to the beach and seeing some of the guys back then. They were drinking creamer out of milk, big quarts of cream. <sighs> just have, to get big. Just to get the big. They have the fat <laughs> and then the protein. Right. And, yes. and for those guys, the real Blair's concept, it right. worked. Larry Scott, mm -hmm. fat and protein. He had, mm -hmm. had fat on every meal along with protein, but no carbs. Okay. So that was the concept, and it worked for Don Hallworth and Larry Scott and a lot of those guys. Okay. Um, and then I had someone write to me, and they said, the bodybuilding diet that you had back in the 70s, would that work today on the body? Well, yeah, because it's the same body. It's the same body. The body didn't change. It, it, they're trying to reinvent everything. Right. You can. It's just basic stuff. Basic stuff. You don't have to reinvent the workout. You don't have to reinvent the diets. The one that you used 30 years ago still works. Now, if you want to add things to it because you enjoy it, right. that's okay, that's too. That's okay. But the basics still works. Still works. Every show that I want, I go back to the gym the next day and I go, okay, back to basics. Right. How am I going to improve for the next show? Right. So, it's nothing fancy, it's nothing new, it's nothing cosmetic. It's just barbell, squats, deads, and bench. <laughs> All right. So, at your age now, you still have both kidneys. I do. <laughs> you, you chose to shave your head. I chose, yes. <laughs> and you're off the drugs. Yes. And I always, I mean, I was in Germany and I was writing this stuff on uh, no drugs. And I said, if you pay for the test, I'll, I'll submit every day for the blood test. Not you, and I'll do the real test. Mm -hmm. So you pay for it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. If you know bodies and you know bodybuilding and you look at the guy who, who, if you really understand muscle, you can see what real muscle looks like. Yeah, definitely. You can see what I flex. It's real muscle. There's nothing going on there. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's Amazing. funny. Amazing. It's funny. Um, so you can still make gains at your age now? Yes, because I know how to isolate the muscle, I know how to train the muscle, mm -hmm. and, and it has a foundation. I built a foundation 20 years ago, so now I'm just building on that foundation. Right. Yeah, the muscle, the peak in the arm is getting better, the quads getting a little bit better, because I've changed my, modified my workout a little bit better, I can, you know, I mean, I understand my body better. One more thing I want to add, um, they say as you grow older, you uh, have a hard time retaining muscle mass. Uh, the body just doesn't retain it. The testosterone levels drop for the average man, and it's hard to retain that mass. Um, I find as I get older, there's a little truth in that. Yes, to a point. Yeah, from injuries mainly. I mean, I have like pinched nerve in my shoulder from wrestling, so it makes this right. arm smaller. Than this We're arm. limited. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I think my back could be a little bit sharper, but I can't deadlift. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite moves. Mm -hmm. So I a lot of. T-bar rows, mm -hmm. CDK bar rows, um, close grip. I do a lot of close grip barbell rows, mm -hmm. metal back, mm -hmm. hyper extensions. So I'm just working around it so I to keep do. the thickness in there. But I know the deadlift is the old bread and butter. Well, it gets every body part. Right. right. Everything. It's, so, it's difficult. It's hard to do, but it works. It works, but I've taken it out because it throws my hips off Yeah. And everything. Now, the supplement, there was a question about what supplements he's taking. Yeah. Basic stuff. I take a multivitamin, B complex, C, E, zinc, calcium, magnesium, um, B12. Yeah. That's it. That's all good. Every day or every other day. Not even every day. Yeah. Like I said, no protein shakes, no coffee, no pre workouts, none of this stuff. I just eat my meals. I keep it simple. It is simple. Do you eat before you train? I do. When I was, if I had the time, I would not. But since I have clients training all day, I do eat, train, and then you know, eat meals in between, six times, and then train again. But I prefer eating <coughs> training on empty stomach. And when I was competing, it was empty stomach. I can't do that, I get hungry. Um, I can't run my car without gas either, so it's the same principle for me. Yeah, I understand. But after you train, I was told, I mean, I always take protein after I train. I was told years ago, mm -hmm. you need sugar or glucose after you train to replenish the, glu the glycogen in the muscle. True, that's when the carbs come in. Right, so that's yes. when you have the carbs. That's when I have the carbs. Before the workout, it's just egg whites, Here's my breakfast. Egg yeah, yeah. whites, broccoli, mm -hmm. half of an apple, half of a grapefruit. It's fine. That's my breakfast every day. Yeah. And then I will work out, I will come home, more rice, olive oil and brown rice. Yeah. Or yams. Yeah, yeah. Ground turkey, chicken breast, 
and egg whites. Okay. Because of my blood type, I do have red meat steak every two weeks. Oh, you go by that uh, the thing with the blood and the food? Yes. Yeah. And for me, it's, it's true. When I don't have the red meat, I think I'm going to need to go check into the hospital. So I have a little red meat, four or five ounces. Next day, I feel great. You know your body. I know my body. you got to listen to your body. The body talks to you. Yes, it does. People don't listen. You know, it tells you when you're tired, too. It tells you when you're tired. It tells you when you're overtraining. It tells you when you need to eat. And I go, oh, I just, my body's telling me I need this. And I go have it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that comes from experience and time. Of course. Yeah. A lot of time, a lot of experience over the years. Yes. Uh, you're living in Vegas. You like it there? I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, Vegas is good. Where do you train? In town. At City Athletic Club. Can people find you there? Yeah. City Athletic Club. Summerland. <laughs> okay. Is that yeah, in Summerland? Yeah. And then on Facebook? You're on Facebook? I'm on Facebook and uh, Tony Pearson 87 Instagram. Tony okay. Pearson 87. Yeah. You see, guys, this is where he is. If you want to reach him and ask him questions, he'll answer them for you. I post a lot of stuff, a lot of videos on Instagram about proper tech and form, how I know to train you the back. I've and, seen them. Yes. So this yes. is good. This is good for information for all of you that train. Take advice from Tony. He knows what he's doing. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. Oh, absolutely. I know it's hard. No, it's good to be here. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner. We'll see you next time. Com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.